Before moving to the lake house, we lived at the Pallison place down on the river near Byron. I have many memories there of hoeing the crops and growing up before we moved out to the lake place. The house was larger and uh, some of the family is still living with us, Pearl particularly. And uh, a lot of the uh, older brothers and sisters would come by from time to time and stay with us a while. So it was a large old uh, a log uh, ranch house. Now how old were you when you went there? Uh, that's probably where we first lived after I was born in Lovell and we went to the Paulson place. Well, Dad was running the sheep on the Rattlesnake Mountain and we lived there as a launching pad. <clears throat> after that, uh, those years, uh, Dad bought the lake place and moved out there, which was about mm, mm, eight miles up the road. So how old were you when you moved? I can't remember the exact time that we moved. Uh, it's, it it kind of runs together, the facts, <laughs> the facts run together there, but uh, those are the two places uh, where the family lived. And when you're asking me all the details on the, on the lake place, being such a small house, that had to be after the rest of the family had departed and all gotten married off because I'm the only one that went to the lake house as a, as a child and the rest of them had gone on to start their lives. Okay. So. At the Powelson place, we were near uh, family and cousins and other, other family members and I had a great deal of enjoyment uh, with the Mangus family, the Sean Mangus family. Uh, with Wayne, Jay, and Bert, and Peggy. I spent a lot of time at their house, which was just up on top of the, the hill, a uh, little hill, and they spent time at our house. And, of course, the chores, uh, when I was big enough to hold a little pail, we call them lard pails, I would go after they milk the cows and I would strip the cows, which means you finish off the milking. And uh, that was how I learned how to milk a cow. How many cows would you say you had? Uh, I had several cows because milk was a big ingredient of our diet. And we had a large family there at Palson Place, Palson Place. And so we had several. Of course, uh, out in the crow we had sheep, pigs, cows, horses, uh, everything a farm has. And most of the uh, tractor was provided by horses and plows and harrows and rakes and it was very manual. Uh, chores, there's always chores to feed the chickens slop the pigs, milk the cows. So as soon as I was big enough and had strength in my hands, I became a dairyman. I milked the cows. <laughs> well, the work day, if you're big, whatever you, <laughs> whatever you were big enough to do, you did. <laughs> if you could hold a hoe, <laughs> you hoed. <laughs> if you could milk the cows, you milked. You just slop the pigs, you slop the pigs. So I just grew into those things. And we had a lot of animals to take care of, so, and the family was still there and coming and going there because it was a larger place. And I don't know why we moved from there to the lake house, but of course it did. And there is also uh, where I was about three and a half or four years old. Uh, I was run over by a wagon, and do you remember the, the horses? What do you remember from that? The horses were trained to move <laughs> on command. <laughs> Get up and whoa! <laughs> and I was under the wagon 
cleaning up some, I believe it was a pea crop, and cleaning out some of the wagon to put on the wagon to haul to the barn. In other words, you were harvesting peas? And harvesting peas and beans and corn and potatoes. I mean, we harvested everything, because that, that's what we ate. And uh, somebody pulled the horses, get up, and they got up and ran over me. So they uh, put me in the old Model A, hauled me to level. Well, uh, where, where did the wheel run over you? Uh, over my thigh. The, the brake is in my left leg and the thigh, the main, main bone. So it was serious. So I was in traction in the Lovell Hospital for a long time. And I do remember I had a very special friend. And he would come and sit with me while I was, my leg was propped up in traction until it healed. Now how, did, how was your leg arranged? Uh, laying, on my, laying on my back and the traction uh, elevated, the leg was elevated in the old, uh, you probably see them in old movies, the traction, how the leg is up in the air for a, a broken leg or an accident victim. And you just can't move until it knits and heals back together. I don't remember it ever being in the cast because it was so high and this is the way they took care of it. Anyway, it was a, a, a time, even at that young age, it was a, a trauma time that I remember. But, that, <clears throat> but that's about all I remember of it. Who was the friend that came? Uh, he was a friend of the family, uh, and oh, I imagine he was 24, 25 years old, and he kind of adopted me, <coughs> helped take care of me, uh, and was interrelated to the family in some ways. I, I don't remember how what the relationship was, but he's very close to the family. My mother, <coughs> if there was a, a stranger, or somebody in need. <clears throat> there was always room at the table. So there was other member, other people that were extended members of our family that, were, that they told me <laughs> were adopted. <laughs> they just came to live with us. Mm -hmm. And when they, they were able to get out on their own and go, well, they left. And uh, many of those people, and I can't even remember their names anymore because I was very young. But I remember them coming and going. And, and Dad and Mom gave them a boost to get started again on their lives. When you're in the hospital, remember being alone a lot, or did people come see you all? Uh, Mostly, there was, I remember people being there because other family lived in Lovell. My sister Virginia lived in Lovell, and uh, family members lived there. And so I had a lot, of, I seemingly had a lot of visitors. But uh, the, the main memory, of course, is having my leg <laughs> hung up on this apparatus. While I was healing. And How long do you think you were there? Uh, I have no idea. I couldn't even remember. And how old were you? At about four. Uh, so when you were living, when you were a kid, you didn't really have any brothers to play with. Cousins. And when you guys would play, how would you play? Oh, the outside. <laughs> Stick horses. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, Cowboys and Indians. Uh, the two, probably the two major things: hide and seek, Red Rover, Red Rover, Red Rover, come over, and I forget how that all goes. But any kind of those games that you read about in the books, we probably played. Would you go to the movies or listen to radio? Movies. What's that? Radio, the Green Lantern. Could you get radio up there? Yeah. 
We weren't that far off in the country. Uh, How many channels do you think you could get? Not many. Three, four. It'd be max. Lone Ranger. Uh, Green Lantern, Lone Ranger were probably the two favorites, as I remember. But we, we entertained ourselves by doing things, reading books. We became good readers. And uh, between playing and reading books and inventing our own games, uh, I was trying to think of another game we played, but it escapes me at the moment. Farm food, man, right out of the right out of the row, corn, beans, potatoes, uh, peas, uh, and of course the meat from the animals, fresh because there wasn't much of a storage at the uh, Palson place. We had the old ice box, and we were near the river, so ice was very available. And we get ice for the ice box. So do you remember harvesting and storing ice? Can you tell, tell, us, tell us how that worked? Well, I I wasn't really big enough because the chunks of ice were, were quite heavy. But I would go with my family down and, and watch them uh, take ice. Actually, I literally cut ice out of the river and take it up and put it in the cellar with the sawdust to keep it from melting. So they would have special saws for that? Uh, I, I saw us. I don't know if they're special or not. Uh, I didn't know at the time, but it cut ice, whatever they used. And they cut them in uh, pretty uniform blocks. They got good at it because everybody was doing it. It's just something everybody learned. I never actually cut the ice because my age there. Because when I was uh, about, I went to fourth grade in Byron. Then we moved to Lovell, moved off the farm to the city when I was uh, nine or ten. Probably nine, because mother died when I was ten. What do you remember about going to school and how you got to school? Okay. Uh, from the time. Uh, I was going to barn school and living on the ranch, the lake house particularly, I had a horse named Curly. And I'd ride the horse <clears throat> up to the main gate, which was mm, half mile away from the house, and take his bridle off and Tell him go to the barn. He <laughs> go to the barn. Well, what'd you do with the bridle? I got a fence post. Because huh? nobody stole anything in those days. Yeah. And then I come back from school on the bus, uh, pick up the bridle, and take it home. And if the family, if nobody in the family was there, I'd just go to the neighbors and sleep with the neighbors. Where would they have been? Um, they. The neighbors, the Jones family, lived right at our gate, coming in our uh, into our place. But ours was a half mile back from the gate, and their house was right on the road. And uh, he was a a bigger lad, <laughs> a couple of years older than I. And I remember one time that we were pretty good friends, but one time he was picking on me, and I'd had enough, so. I had to whip him. But after that, he didn't bother me anymore. <laughs> I mean, if your family wasn't there, where would they have been? Oh, to town or doing something with the sheep herd. Because uh, a lot of times uh, they would call them to go help somebody. Because mm -hmm. in those days, you helped each other. So if they hadn't gotten back from town or they went off to help somebody, and uh, I just waited there till they got back, and it was a standard arrangement, you know, with a neighbor, love your neighbors. And the, the, the cemetery there where the Moody and Mangus family is is called Penrose, P-E-N-R-O-S-A, Penrose. And 
So that's the uh, the area. Uh, well, the Mangus were relatives or just friends? Uh, Mangus is my mother's maiden name. And her family lived in uh, Logan, West Virginia. Coal mining people, mining people. Large family, must have been a dozen in her family. And most of them, uh, well, dad met mother on a mission for the Mormon church. And he went out there and he had seen her in a dream. So when he saw her, he recognized her. And of course, <laughs> being on a mission, you're not supposed to look at women, date, things like that. And so he told her that he would be back for her, that she was to be his wife. And well, the, uh, the mission board found out about it, this relationship, and uh, shipped him off to New York, <laughs> upstate. So he finished his mission in New York. But when he got off his mission, he went back to uh, uh, West Virginia, and mother and her family ended up coming to Wyoming, to a desolate frontier area there in Penrose, and that's where they settled in Penrose. And uh, the whole family came, so I had plenty of cousins my age to play with, different families there just within miles. And of course in the uh, uh, area, you know, if you're big enough to ride a horse, you just get on your horse and say, I'll be back, or they, you just, may I go over to the cousin's house and got on the horse and rode over there, or walked, it wasn't that far. Dad probably went on, a, on the mission, uh, well, he's probably about 22, I'm guessing. It's in the family book, uh, the Moody book, and uh, if I remember right, uh, mother was probably 18, when you met her. Did he ever serve in the military? No. Uh, so when was he born? You're embarrassing me. Uh, I don't remember the year he was born. Probably the 1890s. Too old to go World War I? No, he missed the wars in between. They only wanted young people. So how did you learn about these stories about uh, how your parents met? Uh, in Dad's letters and in the Moody book and the genealogy collected by my, particularly Pearl and, and Martha. Uh, which I have copies of, and in the process of making copies for you and Mike, then you can make copies of that if you want to pass them on to your kids. Uh, I had several notebooks full of family history, and as when you find my closet, my notebooks, you'll say, say legacy, and it's all in there. And I'm uh, dealing mostly with uh, just memories of reading and reading all that, and many stories that Pearl particularly, Pearl and I were real close, even though we're eight years apart. Uh, actually, went out to California when she, when, uh, she moved from California to Wyoming, and if I recall properly, <laughs> I was all of 15 years old. Uh, say that again, she moved from California to Wyoming? Did to she Wyoming. Start in Wyoming? She, uh, Martha and Pearl lived in Bakersfield in a, uh, uh, a two unit, uh, what do they call them? Uh, Apartment? Uh, no, side by side, uh, a duplex. They lived there together and the kids grew up together. And she got a divorce, I drove I somehow got out to California and uh, drove her back to Wyoming. Well, she was driving and she got sick in the desert. 
and maybe at 50 years old, I said, what do I do now? <laughs> and my dear sister Pearl says, drive. <laughs> so, <laughs> remember somewhere down in uh, probably uh, coming out of the desert of California through Nevada in Utah, somewhere, I don't remember where exactly she got sick, but I drove her the rest of the way home. Did you have a driver's license? Nope. <laughs> driver's license? What was that? I I learned to drive as we graduated to mechanized equipment and actually had trucks that we loaded up in the field from the farm wagon to the old trucks. And I learned to drive them probably all of eight years old. Propped up on a cushion so I could reach on everything. And mainly probably steering it because they had throttles on them for, uh, connected to the foot feed. You pull the throttle out and it would, it would go that slow so they put it in grandma which is, of course, the lowest gear, and I'd stare it down the rows while they loaded it. And uh, so I'd been driving for a few years <laughs> the time I got to be 15. Where did we stop? 